I have previously raised examples of patients being sent south of the border for NHS treatment because they can't get it here from Scotland's NHS. Now, through our Freedom of Information request, we have learnt that half a million pounds of Scottish taxpayers' money has been spent sending almost 15,000 patient scans around the world, some as far away as Australia, to be reviewed. So, First Minister, why are Scottish scans being sent to private companies on another continent for analysis? First Minister. The NHS will always take steps to ensure uh, the speediest possible diagnosis of patients and the speediest possible uh, treatment of patients. Uh, what Douglas Ross has narrated, I'm happy to look uh, closely at the figures and respond to him in more uh, detail. But that will represent a tiny, tiny fraction uh, of the processing of scans overall in Scotland. But where, uh, for whatever uh, reason, whether that is uh, partly to do, and I don't know in this case whether it is uh, this, partly to do with the nature of the condition uh, or at times constraints uh, in the service here, if there are steps that can be taken uh, to speed up uh, test results, to speed up treatment of patients, then the NHS will do that. Uh, the fact of the matter is we are investing record sums in our National Health Service. We are employing record numbers of people in our National Health Service, but the service is under uh, significant pressure and therefore we will continue to support it uh, to ensure that patients get the services and the treatment that they deserve. Douglas Ross. Well, let me tell the First Minister why thousands of scans are being sent abroad at great cost to Scotland's NHS. The Royal College of Radiologists say that Scotland needs 100 additional consultant radiologists than it has right now. And these problems are not unique to radiology. Across Scotland's NHS, serious issues are mounting. This week, health figures showed that delayed discharge in our NHS has reached its worst ever levels. That means patients unable to get home, stuck in our hospitals at a cost of hundreds of millions of pounds. Now, nearly eight years ago, the then SNP Health Secretary, still sat on the front bench, promised to, and I quote, eradicate delayed discharge within the space of a year. But today, it's worse than ever before. First Minister, will your government ever eradicate delayed discharge like you promised? First Minister. Well, firstly, um, I, I remember many, many occasions uh, over uh, the past years when I was Health Secretary and since I've been First Minister that we have Conservatives uh, coming to this chamber and criticising uh, this government for not using the independent sector more to try to tackle waiting times. It seems that today Douglas Ross is doing the exact opposite. I'm not sure whether that's yet another flip-flop uh, from Douglas Ross. That's for him to determine. Um, in terms of the pressures on our National Health Service, uh, of course there has been a global pandemic uh, since the uh, start of 2020, which I think everybody uh, knows is having an impact on services. But let's look at the two particular issues uh, that Douglas Ross uh, raised uh, in more detail. Firstly, in terms of radiology, uh, well, just in point of uh, fact, there has been an increase in clinical radiology consultants uh, under this government of 62.5%. Uh, there has also been an increase in the workforce in the NHS uh, overall. Uh, we have also increased radiography uh, staff, a 20.5% uh, increase. Uh, there is, of course, I think a global shortage of radiologists and therefore uh, we need to recruit internationally as well. And the challenge of international recruitment, of course, is not made easier by the policies of the Conservatives on Brexit and on immigration. But we will continue to invest in recruitment and we will continue to invest in the overall uh, NHS workforce. Let me turn now to delayed uh, discharges. Uh, we are continuing to see significant pressure across the entirety of the health and care system. Uh, that is seeing more people coming through hospitals who need high levels of care and support in order to be discharged at home. So that is a significant challenge that we are investing to address. So we're investing more than £100 million to en enhance care at home. Uh, we've increased the hourly rate of pay uh, for social care workers um, and we are investing £40 million to enhance multidisciplinary uh, teams. Despite these pressures, though, uh, the average bed days occupied 
uh, by delay uh, now is similar to levels pre-COVID, and the total uh, number of delayed discharges in the most recent year is actually down on the period immediately pre-COVID, down by 23 per cent. So these are significant challenges, uh, but the policies, the interventions and the investment of this government uh, are intended to address them, and we will continue taking these steps. Douglas Ross. The question was, will the First Minister promise, like her former Health Secretary did, to eradicate delayed discharge? And she refused to answer, because delayed discharge has got worse, but the First Minister's excuses are the same. Serious problems like this are happening throughout our NHS. Today, there are reports of a pensioner in Musselburgh who has been trying to get through to their GP for treatment for a lung infection. She had to phone the practice 120 times before she got through to anyone. The lady said, this is the first time in my life that I feel like I don't have a proper medical care. First Minister, do you think it's acceptable that anyone, let alone an elderly, vulnerable person, has to call a GP over 100 times before they get through? First Minister. Well, firstly, on delayed discharges, I'll complete that before coming on to the issues uh, around GP services. Uh, of course, it is our intention uh, and our policy to eradicate delayed discharges. And the key piece of information First I Minister, gave to Douglas... First Minister, sorry, I would be grateful if we could have silence when members are speaking on their feet. Thank you. Uh, and the key piece of information I gave to Douglas Ross in my previous answer is that, yes, we've had a pandemic, and whether Douglas Ross likes to admit it or not, uh, not just in Scotland, but across the UK, Europe and the world, that has had an impact on health and social care services. But if we look at the situation uh, now in relation to the most recent year that we have a full year's figures uh, for, we've seen a reduction in delayed discharge compared to the period immediately preceding the COVID pandemic. That's a, a, as a result uh, of the dedication in health and social care, but also the interventions that I referenced in my first question. And we will continue to invest and we will continue to support policies uh, that are intended to eradicate delayed discharges. Uh, in terms of uh, GP services, uh, no, I don't think uh, the experience that has been narrated uh, is acceptable. And of course, I would be interested to hear the reasons uh, for that from the particular GP uh, practice. GPs, of course, are, are working under considerable uh, stress and strain and pressure, as is the entire NHS. That is why, of course, uh, we are committed to increasing funding, uh, further increases in funding in GP services and recruiting more GPs. Uh, so we will continue to do the hard work of government to support our National Health Service. The final point I would make, uh, presiding officer, is that if it was down to Douglas Ross, these very, very difficult circumstances in our National Health Service would be even worse. Uh, because tens of millions of pounds, uh, even more money, uh, would be having to be taken out uh, of services to give tax cuts for the wealthiest. Because it is only six weeks that Douglas Ross demanded that we took money out of public services and gave tax cuts to the wealthy. So I think everybody across Scotland, no matter the challenges that the NHS is facing, will be breathing a sigh of relief that the Conservatives, at least, are not in government here in Scotland. Douglas Ross. Well, whether the First Minister wants to admit it or not, Scotland's NHS is in crisis at every level. Patient scans being sent abroad, waiting lists too long before COVID are now at record levels. The situation at accident and emergency is at the most critical level it's ever been. And delayed discharge is plaguing our patients and hospitals worse than ever before. And on top of all of that, reports this week say that we could be facing a winter of strikes from staff across our NHS that could cripple the health service here in Scotland. And Dr Ian Kennedy, the chairman of BMA Scotland, said this week, doctors are terrified about the winter and the year ahead. They're right to be terrified, aren't they, First Minister? First Minister. Uh, of course, people are right to be worried uh, about the ability of our National Health Service to cope with spending constraints uh, and the impact of Tory mismanagement on our economy. Yeah, we've, just, we've just heard, since we've been in this chamber, presiding officer, uh, we've just heard that interest rates have been increased by the Bank of England uh, to 3%, the highest for 14 years 
the big, biggest single increase since Black Wednesday yeah. in 1992. Yeah. Uh, that's the cost to people of Tory economic yeah. mismanagement. <laughs> On the National Health Service, of course, in Scotland, we have higher funding per head of population for the NHS uh, compared to the rest of the UK. Our accident and emergency services, while under significant pressure, are the best performing anywhere else in the UK. And in terms uh, of workforce and pay, uh, the NHS workforce, Agenda for Change workforce, uh, and I wish we could give them more because they deserve every penny we can give them, but they are being offered an average 7% pay increase in Scotland, uh, more than 11% for the lowest paid. That compares to 4.5% where the Conservatives are in power in England and, incidentally, where Labour are in power in Wales as well. And, of course, we're having to fund that uh, without any additional resources uh, from the Westminster Government. Instead of that, we face, on the 17th of November, the prospect of spending cuts, again, to pay for Tory economic mismanagement. So I will take my job, I'll continue to take my job uh, seriously to support the NHS, but I will take no lessons from Conservatives who are making such a mess of the economy with such disastrous impacts for all of our public services. <laughs>